I'm going to start off with some selfish questions first, though. Have you watched A Christmas Story yet? No. What? I know. Well, actually, that's not true. I, because you oh, that's bet right. Me, I bet you. You bet me. That is a lie. I answered okay. too quick. <laughs> I did watch it, <laughs> but I obviously forgot because it... <laughs> you were. I think she zoned out several times during the... It's uh, just not for me. I feel like it's one of those movies that you, you have up, to grow up watching. with. Yeah. Like, it is just... I don't get what's funny about it. It just, it, it, I don't know. It, it, I definitely have a lot of association with me and my brother, like yeah, sitting down and yeah. watching it. And now with Ward, my little three and a half year old, he's got glasses and looks he just looks like just the, like, like a boy. Well, he really <laughs> does. Exactly like him. Okay, I'll let that one pass. But also, I don't know if I've ever met anybody that would switch their ringtone at a time to like the Masters theme yes. song. Yes, Is this still a thing? Oh, I still switch? have it. Yeah. I mean, I, I never have my phone where it's not on vibrate easily, but when it does, it, it does the uh, the Masters theme song. Dave and I both grew up in Augusta, Georgia, yeah, so we love it. Uh, we're pretty. Obsessed. He's the good golfer, though. But oh, yeah, we love, say, we love the Masters. So he's better at the links than you are. <laughs> Way better. I'll accept that. And then the talk show with her daughter. There was one episode on YouTube, but I'm waiting for the follow-up with the poodles. What yeah, happened? Why did we hang him? I know, I know. It was Conversations funny. Conversations with Isaac. Conversations with Hillary's daughter. Yeah, yeah we uh, we had fun on the road. She was out a lot this summer, and I love talking with kids. I love I mean, having kids so now adorable. too. Like they're so fun and cute to just ask. Like I told her all about like space and the moon, and she was blown away. Uh. That someone walked on the moon. I told her somebody yeah. walked on the moon. She couldn't handle it. I mean, it was it was fun. Well, I Ground hope that those come back because I loved that little segment <laughs> yeah. and I just wanted to see what happened with the poodles. <laughs> but let's talk about what we're here at the album. It was a therapy session I didn't know I needed. Oh. And oh, I gosh. didn't write it, it wasn't part of this, so being the ones that sang it and wrote it, it had to been an emotional experience for all of you. It was, yeah. I mean, I feel like we poured everything, everything we had into these songs and, and really digging deep into what we've been through and, um, wanting to to really write songs that we hope really relate to to others i think it was a therapy session we didn't know we needed either i mean it was a bit <laughs> of a, a a journey i mean i think there was a lot of our story in this record of, over the last two years of just what we've gone through all personally and all professionally and all together and separate so it's 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 kind of where ocean came from there's been a lot of waves of kind of ups and downs i think that got us to this point but it, it's very honest very vulnerable and some deeper topics. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is a moment in our career where we want to kind of just be forthright and be completely transparent with where we are. Do you feel like it's an album you could have made 10 years ago? No, no, no not at no. all. Well, I mean, you know, most of the subject matter, I mean, even a song like What I'm Leaving For is about, you know, having to leave our kids. Um, and, and, you know, and then other songs like Be Patient With My Love, I mean, kind of going through just that balance, you know, that uh, of this whirlwind that we've kind of been through over the past 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, and learning how to balance and uh, and wanting to be a better a better version of yourself. So there's there's a lot of that, I think, that comes from a little wisdom that comes from age, you know. And just having the first 10 years of our career really go so fast, it's mm -hmm. like we didn't really have time to, to process fully. And I think you hit a certain point in your life, and we all hit it at different ages where you start to see patterns of things like, oh man, maybe I should work on that. Oh, maybe I should work on that. Like where you can't outrun it anymore. <laughs> and I think what you're getting is 13 songs of us kind of doing that yeah. for everybody to hear and just and taking all of that life experience and the work that we've done and the, and the hard times and, and putting it into song. Do you ever think, like, that's a brave thing to do, but do you ever think about that, how somebody you'll probably never meet that song comes out and it just hits them and that they're going through the that's same thing. Yeah, that's, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what happens to us. I mean, we're huge fans of so much music ourselves and songs just hit you in a moment. Yeah, I mean, we all have those records for us that we grew up on and songs that hit us today. So if we can be that for somebody, that's the ultimate, uh, ultimate reason we love doing music. I'm gonna nerd out for a second and I don't know if it's true or I made it up because I've listened to all your records, but on Ocean, I, have you had a song before where it was just you for like the first? No. Kind of, yeah, no. what was the choice of that? Because your vocals are haunting and it's so emotional, but why the choice for this one? It really wasn't a choice. I mean, it wasn't kind of a conscious thing. Just, um, I remember being in the studio and Dave and I both were like, God, yeah. it just doesn't feel right we'll to come in this. on this first chorus. It just seems like such a singular emotion you know, it didn't, it, and so we're really only in there to just help lift the song as it goes, you know, and to add interest, but yeah. it's it's just in dynamics, but it really is, it, I feel like you needed to fall in to the character, that singular character, so we, we stayed away. That was the first time I think we've yeah. stayed off the first mm -hmm. chorus ever. 
Yeah, it's phenomenal. And then also, have you had a collaboration before, like secretly no. where someone's been featured? Because why now then? I know it's amazing. Just yeah. finally got around to doing it. We've talked about doing it uh, with, you know, with other artists as well. And finally, Little Big Town, you know, we just, we wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, leave it. You know, I kept calling them and saying, gosh, we got to find the right song. And so I sent them the thing that wrecks you. And uh, Karen and Jimmy uh, both just responded so, so hugely to it that uh, I think a few weeks later we had them in the studio and, and you know. Yeah, we were, all, we were all there together, which was fun too. I mean, we made sure we found a day that all seven of us could be there. We didn't want to have to split that up, but it was awesome watching them do their vocals and us working our parts all together. It was, it was quite the vocal day. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a, yeah, a joy for the producer engineer also. Yeah. They're trying to mesh um, all that together. Time, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I was just in Nashville, as, as I was telling you, and I just was blown away by the music community. And I'm just wondering, you know, what is Nashville doing right, though, that other cities like Toronto and everyone else can do to, I think, maybe support the artists? Or why? What is it about it, I think, that everybody wants to go to? It doesn't matter if it's country music. You yeah. I, you know, I feel like Nashville is such a, a pioneer in going into any bar pretty much on any street and it being live music. Like... And a lot of times you're hearing song, songwriter nights where it's original music. You know, you do, you have a lot of the cover cover bands and things, but a lot of times they'll even intersperse an original song. And I think anywhere, in a, if a city, if a community can rally around the live music scene and nurture that songwriting spirit, that live show um, energy, I think that that is one thing that Nashville does really well. They have, they have so much heart too. I mean, there's just the history of country music and the relationships in country music with our fans, the relationship with each other mm -hmm. as artists. I mean, like Little Big Town and stuff. We're all good friends trying to support each other. And I think that's what you're kind of talking about as well, is we're, we're all there cheering each other on. Everybody's yeah. cheering for each other in Nashville. I think that's a misconception people have, is that, you know, musicians, they don't get along, you aren't friends, it's all cutthroat. But it just, it really does seem like a family that y'all are buds. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we try to push each other, you know, and, and, and inspire each other. You know, when I hear a great song, from Little Big Town, I'm like, man, that's, gosh, that's good. <laughs> we got to come out with something that, you know, it can can stand up to that, you know, and it's just like, and hold up in that same, you know, it, you're always inspired by the other artists, especially new artists that come in and, you know, like the new Casey Musgraves record just floored me and it even made me go, we got to be more honest and vulnerable and that's when the fans connect the most and, and it's, you know, really has been the truth for us. So Canada loves you, everyone loves you, but tour possibly yes we, oh, i can yeah. go ahead and say we're, we're announcing it soon, soon i don't want to we don't want to trump yeah. the uh mm -hmm. trump we don't want to <laughs> trump the uh the announcement but we've got two amazing artists coming out that everybody will know and love and uh we'll be touring all through the states canada yeah. and overseas okay last thing it's really random though i had a viewer tweet me saying that you have the most epic impersonation of eric church as backstreet boys no no, no. like oh, i didn't know dream. that was your dream your dream. Oh, oh. No. what was that? The dream. I have no idea what they're talking oh, about. No, oh no, it was a dream I had where we were we were doing uh, mm -hmm. where I, I, I said I had a dream where like we were covering like a Backstreet Boys song, With Eric and Church. Eric Church comes up and said you shouldn't do it that way, <laughs> and Eric Church like kind of goes like I want it that way. I want it that way. <laughs> you know, tell me why ain't nothing but a heart. Right, something Some like that. I guess that's what yes, it was. It was amazing. He has amazing dreams. Actually. I do that have sounds really great amazing. Like, Taylor Swift has been in them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Underwood. You know. That's for a whole other time, though. I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's a whole other. They're interview. all PG. They're just random and weird. You know? <laughs> like we go on crazy adventures. Me and T. Me and T. Swift. T. Swifty. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>